All right, everybody, this is Ross the Fig Boss. In today's video, we are gonna show you guys how to root fig cuttings. I'm gonna share with you guys all the tips and tricks that I know. We're gonna bring you through the process of actually using the fig pop method. This is the method that I'm choosing to cover in this particular video as we've not covered this in the past. This is definitely a rooting method of not just fig cuttings, but of other species of trees that has proven to be quite successful. And in particular, fig trees are very easy to root which is why they're a very popular uh, topic in the world of rooting and propagating. They're very easy to propagate. And in fact, we're gonna bring you guys through actually this whole process of actually creating a fig pop. We're gonna talk about the rooting process in terms of all the different parts that you guys are gonna need. So all the different pieces, we have the bags themselves, we have plant tags that we're gonna talk about, parafilm, pruning shears, rooting hormone, containers, other methods. And then at the very end of this video, guys, we're going to bring you guys through and talk about all the different pro tips so that even if you guys know how to do this, you know how to root fig cuttings at the end, you're going to learn something because I'm going to share with you guys some of the best and important lessons when rooting anything. Uh, now, I'd also highly suggest that you guys go to my blog because before I begin, check out my blog. I have created and written a 10 page article on propagating figs. It took me a lot of time. I would highly recommend you guys read it. There's so much information. It's figboss.com. And then in a few days from now, I'm also gonna be publishing another article on rooting figs just on that topic. So not just the whole topic of propagating fig trees like grafting, air layering, you know, stool layering, uh, root grafting, tissue culture, growing them from seed, et cetera. That article is gonna be just about rooting fig cuttings. And so I would highly recommend going there, learning something, check out the blog. I put a lot of time into that. So let's get into it now. Here's some of the things you guys may need. And again, we're gonna focus on this fig pop method, but I'll share with you guys some other things that I've used in the past. First off, you definitely wanna get some pruning shears. This is great for scoring the bottom of the cutting. And I'll show you guys how I do that as we do this process here. But scoring the bottom is just simply going to remove some of that bark, expose that uh, hardwood and expose that cambium layer to get a little bit of extra root development. Something optional is rooting hormone. I like Clonex. This is a great product. Um, I put it here in this little shot glass, then you dip it in the shot glass, and then you put it in the soil as soon as you're ready to put it in the soil. Um, I actually really prefer rooting hormone now. I know it's a it's an optional thing, as I said, and not a lot of growers actually go for it, but it definitely helps. Um, so if you have a stubborn cutting, I would highly recommend getting some of that. You can also use parafilm. And so if you're using the direct potting method, which is what you see here, um, this is basically a cutting that I stuck into soil. As you can see, this is a tree pot, as they're called. It's four inches by nine inches. You can get them on Greenhouse Mega Store. And so you just fill this up with uh, well-draining soil. And then you can use all kinds of different soils like rice holes, shredded bark, really, really fine bark. Um, you can use perlite, vermiculite, promix, uh, you know, cocoa core, peat moss. You can even use worm castings and compost as long as you create a well-draining mix. And so once you've got your pot basically filled with soil and it's pre-moistened, you're just gonna take your cutting and just stick it right in there. And that's why it's called the direct potting method. You're directly potting it right into the soil. This is great because you're not transplanting. You're eliminating an unnecessary step. That's one of the pro tips we're gonna talk about at the end of the video. And then at the top of the cutting, as you can see here, this is already a fully rooted out tree. I can plant this now that it's rooted out into a one gallon size pot or even a two gallon size pot. I can put this into a larger size. I could trade it, I could sell it. Or I could plant it directly into the yard here, wherever I have my fig trees planted. Um, and so what you need to do, though, if you're going to be planting and using the direct potting method, is you got to use parafilm or buddy tape. This is a wax tape that goes around the bark and around the tree so that anything that's exposed to the air doesn't have as humid of conditions like the soil provides. This is really going to help keep that moisture in so that you don't dry out your cutting. That's really critical. We don't want the top to dry out. We don't want the bottom to dry out. And it eliminates the use of a humidity dome, which is a completely unnecessary step and actually a very problematic step for a lot of new growers. Some of the other things you may want is uh, plant tags. So plant tags are very simple. 
I get these so cheaply and I have hundreds of them, thousands of them, because they're from vinyl blinds. You go to Home Depot, go to Lowe's, get yourself some vinyl blinds that somebody would hang in their house. They're like 10 or $15. And then on the ends, you just make some cuts with scissors and you make these really thin strips and you write on them with pencil, whatever it is the variety name is. Here I have one called Black Mission NL. The pencil lasts actually a season or two. It does last, believe it or not. And this is vinyl. It lasts almost forever. So it's a great and easy and affordable plant tag. You don't have to go spend crazy amounts of money on that. The other tip here, another thing we may need for the fig pot method is actually these bags. These are Ziploc bags that I use for my cuttings. Actually, I ship them in this size. If you guys recall, you've purchased cuttings from me in the past. Um, this is how I ship them in these. Basically, they're six inches wide by 14 inches long. And so the cuttings I send are at least a foot in length. So I need a really long bag. Um, now these bags doubly act as a pot essentially for the fig pot method. So it's pretty nice. I get them in, uh, in bulk of a thousand um, and I get them from packagingprice.com. Again, they're six inches by 14 inches, two millimeter millimeters and also you can get them from Uline. There's plenty of places, obviously, to get them from, but these are really nice. Um, the other thing you're going to need for the fig pot method is rubber bands. These are file bands, technically. You can get them in bulk for obviously cheaper. I think Quill has a good price. And also, you can get them um, on Amazon, which is where I got these for about 7 or $8 for about roughly 125 of them, something like that. And uh, these are longer and sturdier rubber bands that go around the length of this larger bag. Now, so that's pretty much everything you'll need. Maybe we'll add in some soil of your choosing. I like vermiculite. It adds a little bit of extra silica. It's also really well draining and holds a minor amount of water, just the right amount of water that we need and humidity that we need to root these fig cuttings pretty much every time. Now, here's how this process works of actually creating a fig pot. You're gonna take your plastic bag, you're gonna open it up, and then you're gonna fill up basically four solo cups worth of vermiculite into that bag. Now, you can create any size fig pot that you want, but what I'm finding is you get a scale and you measure this out, is that one solo cup or four solo cups, let's say, of perlite is about 12 ounces. So if I were to weigh this, it's about 12 ounces. Now, but I have to add water, right? And the golden rule with the fig pot method that a lot of people are liking is about one fifth of that amount of weight is water. So a five to one ratio of soil to water. And so you want five parts soil or five parts vermiculite to one part water, which essentially means if we're doing uh, 12 ounces of vermiculite, then we want about two and a half ounces of water. So all I'll do is just really get, you know, something that's going to be reliable for two and a half ounces and then just throw this in here. And then that's good for quite a long time because what we're going to do after that, after we add the soil, we'll throw in the cutting and then we'll wrap around the cutting actually with our hands. We'll just grip this tight. As you can see, here is the cutting on the inside. Just the top is sticking out. You want this as far in as possible with just a few nodes at the top because this extra bag here that we're not crimping and we're not burying below the soil adds a little bit of extra humidity for the top. And so now the top of this thing has a little bit of humidity that kind of acts like this parafilm. It doesn't dry out nearly as quickly. And so, but if we crimp this and we tie this off with a rubber band, just wrap this around the cutting and then wrap it down here around the bottom. It's actually very simple. Um, then this creates, basically what you have here is the fig buff. It's just kind of uh, like, a, like a bag, but it's a pot essentially for your fig cutting. And we've already given it the right amount of water. We use weight. Weight is critical. The right amount of water is critical. We have all the different tools here that we mentioned. And now this thing pretty much is gonna root every single time. You would be surprised because if you get the right ratio of humidity and water in here, it's almost like you can't fail. I mean, fig cuttings are really that easy. And that's really the beauty of fig cuttings. As I said, they're so easy to root. They're so easy to propagate. It's such a great way to actually propagate figs and actually give them to your friends, your family, your neighbors. You know, maybe you had your grandfather's tree. You want to go 
take some cuttings from it. Now is the time. We're getting to the spring. This is a great time to be doing this. And then of course, you just do this method and it's so simple. Uh, I think it's just such a nice gift and there's so many ways to do this that it adds a little bit of creativity too, that you can get creative and really start to learn and understand how to propagate things, but also enjoy that process of propagating. It doesn't have to be horrendous for everybody. We don't have to kill everything with a, with a brown thumb. Just by following the steps I've mentioned, you will see success. Getting that right ratio of water to soil goes a, an extremely long way. So let me now talk to you guys about some of the the pro tips that I would highly, highly recommend. Um, first off, you know, the method that you choose, I think is critical, but use the method that is important and, and, um, and easy for you. Use the method that you've been using. If you really wanna see success, you've never done this before, try the fig pot method. You could also just stick them right in the soil outside. I'm not even kidding. Right after last frost, if the cuttings are long enough and healthy enough and strong enough, you'll have a pretty big sized tree at the end of that season. And they almost every single time root outside in my clay soil. You could also, by the way, create a bed, a raised bed with really fluffy light soil in it um, and just plant the cuttings in that. Uh, you know, put some you know shade cloth over it if it's in a lot of sun. Um, parafilm the tops potentially and at the end of the season you have such a light and fluffy soil you could very easily dig them up or even midway through the season and put them in a container um, it's very easy to do this no matter what method that you do the critical piece is that you have the right amount of soil moisture if you have too much soil moisture which is almost always the case the cutting will rot you're not going to see success um, so whatever method you choose, there's always different pros and cons to every method. On the blog, we talk about all the different methods that's going to be coming up in that article. And so you can choose which one's right for you. But the point is, you got to get that soil moisture right. And I would also choose the one method that you're most comfortable with and it's easier for you in your particular situation. Uh, what we don't want to do is take these fig pops and put them in the wrong environment as well. It's not just enough to stick them in soil with the right amount of water. You gotta have them in the right temperature. 78 degrees Fahrenheit is the perfect temperature for rooting, grafting, propagating figs at all. And so if you can get that right, you're gonna have the most success. Now, if you can go over 78, it's not the end of the world, but you gotta be at least at 70. And I wouldn't even root your fig cuttings if you're not at 70. So you can do this outside in the spring, but sometimes the spring's rather cold. And so it can take a little bit of time outside in the spring. Inside, maybe you guys don't even have a warm enough environment. If you're doing this indoors, grow lights really help warm things up and so do heating mats. So maybe invest in those particular things just to get it to 78 or as close to 78 as possible. If you don't have that temperature, you're not gonna see success. Um, one of the methods of, by the way, I want to mention this, that I wouldn't really do is rooting them in water. And I know I don't want to just go over too much method talk too much in this, in this video, but rooting them in water can is, you know, is definitely a, a method that I have not seen a lot of success with. And the reason for that is because when you take them up out of the water and have to transplant them into a larger pot, they typically don't do well. They don't really do well in the soil. And, you know, there's some debate on that particular thought. But what I will say is that you need to simplify this process. In order to see the most success, simplification is better. When you are using and dealing with a skill, a technical skill, even if it's just something like your golf swing or your tennis swing, or let's say even, um, you know, even let's say you're, you're making a painting, right? You gotta have the technical skill that is repetitive, right? If you are swinging a golf club in the wrong way every single time, or in a different way every single time, you're not gonna see the same success as if you had swung the golf club the same exact way every single time, right? So you, this is a repetitive task of rooting figs. You wanna make this repetitive task as simple as possible. So if we're having a thing like rooting fig cuttings in water, and we're having to then transplanting those fig cuttings into a larger pot, that creates an extra step that's rather unnecessary. And that's why 
I've been mentioning this for years that the direct potting method is such a great method because you just stick it in here and you're done. It stays in here until it's fully rooted out. And when it's fully rooted out, you can almost do anything to it and it won't die. So that's the critical piece right there is make everything simple. Now the fig pot method, I know a lot of people who get them to root in this and then very quickly they up pot them into this, into these tree pots. And that I just would not do. I would wait as long as possible uh, before up potting this. And so one of the things you'll have to run into is actually fertilizer. And so one of the things that I would recommend because you're gonna need fertilizer at some point for these fig pops, um, even for the tree pots. And so you can dilute some fertilizer, that's critical. Maybe even in this tree pot or in this fig pop, excuse me, we can add a little bit of compost. Maybe I don't wanna go 100% vermiculite. Uh, maybe I wanna add some compost or worm castings, but we definitely, what is for sure through this process is we should definitely be adding some very diluted fertilizer to help out these fig cuttings. Some of the other things I really recommend is, um, you know, if you have access to a fan or even if you're rooting them outside, that's a natural fan, but add a fan to your rooting environment. Use really, really good grow lights. Spend a little bit of extra money for good grow lights. And the other thing I would recommend is if you can try to increase the CO2 in your rooting environment, that's gonna also go a really long way. I mean, think about back when the dinosaurs lived on Earth, right? There was a lot of CO2 back then in the atmosphere and plants grew like crazy and dinosaurs were huge, right? So it's the same thing. If we can raise the CO2 artificially in the rooting environment, we're gonna have really good plant growth. And that's just um, the same thing that happens in a greenhouse. That's why I'm gonna see really good success this year in this commercial greenhouse that I have access to. So if you can do something like that, add a fan, really nice grow lights, have the right temperature and the right water in your soil, you're gonna see really good success. Beyond that, I think it's really just about the cutting, um, having a good quality cutting, and uh, that's it. Check out the blog, guys. Hit that subscribe button. I hope this really helps. We'll see you for the next one. Take care, everybody.